Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This is part 64, a live steam test to see if the injector works and to find out whether or not the steam water pump fills the boiler. After making some modifications to the injector's check valve and also fitting the steam pump to the engine, the time has come for the first live steam test to see if everything works. The title of this series is a large model showman's engine, which has a large boiler and it takes quite a while to raise steam. After an hour there's not even enough steam in the boiler to blow the whistle properly, and certainly not enough to make the siren work. Contrary to what the pressure gauge is showing, there is actually a small amount of pressure now inside the boiler. What amazes me about this engine is there isn't enough steam to blow the whistle, but there is enough steam to turn the flywheel. And after a quick push from me, off it goes, albeit very slowly. When I watched playback of this video as I was voicing it over, I noticed that I forgot to open the cylinder drain cocks, and this was very foolish of me. The purpose of cylinder drain cocks is to let the water out of the cylinder because the first steam that gets to the cylinder condenses the water. It's not too bad because I'm running this engine very slowly, but if you suddenly open the regulator and let a lot of steam into the cylinder with the drain cocks closed, you can damage the mechanism. I closed the regulator which stopped the engine and then I waited for about 20 minutes. On the pressure gauge at the moment it's showing about 40 psi and I've only opened the regulator slightly, I don't want it to run away with itself but the good news is I've opened the drain cocks now so any water is being drained away. There's a bit more to see on this live steam test because I had to remove the motion guard to make it possible to repair the check valve. As the pressure begins to rise I do notice a slight problem and this is entirely my fault. When I open the inlet valve to the steam pump it burst into life and at the moment it's quite happily pumping water into the boiler. So what's that funny noise and why is the steam coming from the steam inlet pipe? Well it's called incompetent silver soldering on my part, I will put that right before the next steam test. The question is, does this steam pump provide enough water to fill the boiler? And here is the answer. The answer is, yes it does. Too much in fact. What you've just been watching is the boiler priming because it was full right to the top with water. You will notice in this clip that the drain cocks are open and I opened those before overfilling the boiler. This absolutely excellent small steam pump built by my good friend Don English works beautifully. When I first bought it from Don it worked on compressed air but it didn't used to work very well on steam because the shuttle valve used to stick. But I fixed that by removing the shuttle valve, fitting it into my lathe and using some wet or dry sandpaper to very slightly reduce its diameter. I could do with lengthening and modifying the exhaust pipe but I'll do that later. It's time to try the injector and it's nearly working, it is actually pumping water into the boiler but it's still a bit dribbly. This freshly painted egg shaped thing is a second check valve on the way to the boiler from the injector. The injector is working much better and when I turn the water off completely and then reopen it, it picks up again, which is a good thing. Here's a clip from the episode when I was modifying this check valve. After truing up the seat with a steel ball, I refitted the phosphor bronze ball as well as modifying the casting to be a better fit on the boiler bush. When I tested it with compressed air, particularly from the other end, the ball lift seemed to be a little bit too much. The ball is moving into the upper part of the check valve and partially blocking the hole through into the boiler. This is often one of the symptoms of a dribbling injector. It nearly works, but it's not perfect. Just like my crappy silver soldering, you can see in this clip where the steam leak is. The steam is leaking from around the badly silver soldered joint where the steam cone union meets the pipe. I'm claiming diminished responsibility for this. I found fitting this steam pipe to be very difficult. The joint at the T-piece end was fine. I did that first, then I bent the pipe into position to line up with this double union, and that's when it all went wrong. And yes, it was the last job that I did. Sod's law says the last thing you do on a job 
will go wrong. I'll fix that problem and modify the check valve before the next steam test. In this clip the engine is running in a forward direction. That's why the canopy lights are not lit. This engine is designed to generate running in reverse and the valve timing is slightly different. Here the engine is running very well at a moderate speed. And the pump at the side of the bunker tank is replenishing the water. In fact it's doing too good a job even at this speed the level on the water gauge is rising rapidly. And if you listen carefully you will hear that the engine has slowed down and I haven't closed the regulator. The steam pressure is dropping owing to the amount of water that's currently being pumped into the boiler. This pump will work very well with very little steam being applied to its steam cylinder. The engine's running at the moment without a fire in the boiler, I've raked that out because I'm going to blow the boiler down. I'm quite aware that I have talked over the steam test on this particular one. That's due to the fact that these videos are tutorials and I do need to speak to tell people what's going on. If the next steam test is more successful than this one, I won't need to talk hardly at all. This is a very odd clip. I'm actually blowing down the boiler, so I've opened a valve on the front of the boiler which is letting all the water out onto the ground. Yet there's still enough steam in the boiler to make the pump work, which in turn is pumping water into the boiler, and that's probably why it took a long time to blow it down. With the steam pump being able to pump water into the boiler, despite having a very small steam input pressure, is a really good thing. To put this into perspective, let's imagine the worst case scenario. You're running the engine, it may be on the road, it may be at a gala or a fete or even in the back garden. The water could be low, the fire may not be good enough and there is a problem, the injector won't work and you can't run the engine to use the crankshaft driven pump. But all is not lost. Despite the crankshaft driven pump not working because the engine won't rotate and the injector's out of the question because the pressure's too low, but to the rescue is this little steam pump, which quite happily pumps water into the boiler to maintain the water level. My silver soldering may have been bad in this episode, but I was confident that this pump would work. And it did, with negligible steam pressure. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.